Commissioner, what would you say the, the root overall of the problems were today? Um, we didn't play smart football in the first half uh, defensively. Um, they got out to a fast start. We started slow. Um, and then, you know, we picked it up at the, uh, in the second quarter, in the second half. It looked like you had a couple of spirited conversations with Dante after he got beat a couple times. Can you share what you talked with him about or was there anything in particular with him? Just, a, just you know, you, you tell him where to take his eyes. Start looking. He's looking for the ball. Russell's an accurate thrower. He doesn't have to look for the ball. The ball's going to be there. Go play your man. It, it, was, it was just coaching. Gary, you said um, not playing smart defense in the first half, but it looked like you had a couple takeaways that were then. I mean, are those the breaks that you kind of need to go? Yeah, we, yeah, we needed we needed every break. I thought, hey, today I thought our fans came out and saw us. That was a, that was good, you know, supported us. We 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 had opportunity to get some turnovers. Okay, uh, we we capitalized on you know a couple turnovers, uh, but we just didn't make them pay for their mistakes, and, and we made some mistakes and gave them an opportunity to score early in the ball game. And when you get behind early in the ball game against a good football team, a 10 and three football team, and, and you're, you're, you're a struggling football team, um, that's tough. That's How really would, tough. Sorry. How would you describe Kyle Allen's day overall today? Uh, you know, he, he tried to manage the game and he tried to do the things we asked him to do. Obviously, the, the, you know, we don't want him to turn the football over. Um, he was competing and trying to win a football game out there. I thought he stayed compo uh, poised in the second half and, and came back and led us to several scores. Um, and I'll evaluate the tape, uh, you know, when I look at the tape tonight and tomorrow, and then I can share more with you later. Hey, Perry, would you, on a couple of those uh, dropbacks that turned into, you know, he was under pressure and it turned into interceptions, would you like to see him uh, give, kind of give up on the play and tuck and, and take the sack in that case instead of trying to force the throw? It's easy to say, hey, I would like to see that or what have you. I just have to watch the tape and, and see the decision-making process. I know we talked about it on the sideline. One time he really got pressure in his face real real fast, and, and, and we might have turned somebody loose up front, okay? So let me watch the tape, and then I can come back and talk to you about that. Harry, you guys went away at the end from traditional onsides kicks. What were you trying to, what were you trying to do on those last two? Uh, field position, okay. We felt like a, uh, you know, they would be ready for the onside kick. They had seen it like three or four times uh, in, in last week, uh, and so we were trying to onside kick it to, and and with using the field, and then possibly trying to recover the ball if we surprised them with the uh, deep onside kick. It seemed as if getting the ball to Curtis Samuel early was a was a focal point for Scott Turner. Ha have you liked the way that he's gotten the playmakers involved early? Uh, definitely. Uh, that was definitely our priority, try to get our playmakers, more of our playmakers involved, and, and Scott did that well today. Was that a correction for Scott? Did he kind of come, come back? Because, uh, excuse me, to, to be specific, Curtis had a couple of those deep balls that were not connecting earlier in the season. Today, he was used a lot on sweeps, reverses. He took a direct snap, uh, mid-range and short-range routes. Was that kind of a, you saw Scott cur see something that wasn't working and then rectify it in order to utilize it effectively today? I would just say we were trying to get our playmakers the ball, period. And and as we reevaluated our team and saw our, you know, who are our playmakers on our team, you know, he's definitely one of our playmakers on our team and we were just trying to get him more involved in our game plan. Harry, did you consider at any point, you know, kind of replacing Dante or do you just not have enough people or enough confidence in the backups to, to make a change? I, I considered it and and um, as he he was a little frustrated at times out there, and I know he was trying to play hard. He was do he was trying to do the right things. He was just so hyped and and excited about what he was doing out there that he just kind of lost his way a little bit. And I just felt like if we could steer him in the right direction, he would play better. With some of that coming on you, how much is it also his teammates and the rest of the players on this team maybe taking a moment with him on the sidelines? Uh, could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Wait, when you talk about the coaching moments with Dante Jackson, how much is it even his teammates and other players taking a moment with him on those <laughs> sidelines for that opportunity? Yeah, I, we, we, all share, we all share in trying to take a moment with each other as players and trying to correct each other, you know, as, as, as far as like the DBs are concerned. <laughs> and, you know, what you have to do is stay focused. You know, you just can't. You know, you can't get out of control because back in, in, in the back row, things happen fast. And, again, I was telling them that 
Russell's an accurate passer, okay? And we were just trying to get him coached up on what he should do versus what he was doing. And nothing was, you know, we were just trying to manage the game at that point in time, and he was trying to get himself together. Chris, young players like that is, that, is that kind of a lesson to have him, you know, keep playing even though things are going poorly instead of just pulling him out and maybe substituting him at that point? Definitely, yes. With two games to go, is there a chance of looking at Greer and giving him a shot to see what he could do, or do you think that way? Uh, we'll evaluate that this week. You know, um, obviously, after a ball game, you want to go through, you want to look at the tape, okay? After you look at the tape, you want to look at your, your roster and see, you know, can you, you know, what you can do. So we'll evaluate that and we'll, that'll be forthcoming. Christian goes over. 11 to play there late in the closing minutes. What, what did you see? Obviously, you guys were preparing for scramble drill situations against Russell, but what did you see defensively? Yeah, well, we tried to play coverage against them, obviously. Um, and uh, we thought if we could plaster up from a coverage standpoint, uh, we tried to put our fast rushers in. Uh, we thought we could confuse them a little bit with some stunts and games up front. Uh, and the play extended a little bit longer than what I wished it would have extended. And uh, uh, they do an excellent job. We knew that during the course of the week. They do an excellent job of when he starts to scramble, them going deep and coming back short. And it, the play just got extended longer than what we wanted it to. Christian going over 2,000 yards. What else can you say about this guy and just how good he is and what he means to you guys? Hey, he means everything to our, our football team, especially offensively. He's just he's productive. Uh, he comes. Uh, his attitude is absolutely awesome. His effort is is outstanding, and he prepares each week for a winning performance. You've been around this game forever. Is there anyone that remind he reminds you of, or is he just in a cloud of his own right now? Oh, you know. Um, I've, I've had an opportunity to be around some, some good football players. Uh, initially, I said uh, he reminded me of the Marshall Falk type guy because, you know, he can, he can do it running, he can do it catching, he does it protection-wise, and uh, he's outstanding on and off the field. Harry, not many people gave you guys a chance in this one against a 10-win Seattle team coming in. The feeling coming away from this for you, is it, are you overwhelmed by the – the mistakes that continue to keep this team from winning, or do you take something in the, the comeback that kept this, you know, this this team in it in the end against Seattle? A little of both. Um, we've got to take something from this. We can we can compete with a 10-win team. We can compete with the next two opponents that we have to play. Uh, we've got to find a way to eliminate those mistakes and keep harping on not beating ourselves with these mistakes and putting ourselves in the hole. <laughs> Hey, Coach, a former player spoke up on, on Twitter today just talking about how uh, he feels kind of bad about the culture he's seeing down on the, on the sideline. Guys' heads are down after a, an opponent scores. I'm wondering if you can speak after a couple weeks about what you feel this team's identity is and what you feel um, the culture inside that locker room uh, is. I think I, we have good culture. I can't speak about Twitter. I'm not a Twitter guy, okay? Uh, I know what's, I know the effort, the attitude, and the preparation that goes into it, goes in during the week, okay? And uh, that, that has been very good. Harry, was there any thought today of putting Will Greer in at the end? Um, no, not, not, not today, no. Do you feel like the, the fact that Kyle was able to lead, lead you guys down the field at the end and pull it within one score kind of validates that decision to leave him in after three interceptions? Yeah, we were trying to win the football game, and we felt like he gave us the best opportunity to win the football game. All right, thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.